Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Rebecca Freedom for Heard Not Seen, episode number six. And with John Beethan. Today, we're going to be talking about a new project, a new revelation that's come to me called Pure Touch. And what Pure Touch is, is the acknowledgement of the need that our bodies go through when we break up or if we've been single for a long time, there's a void of loving touch that happens. I would say that this is probably more of the case the um, further older you get, because when you're in college, there's lots of community events. There's there's a, interaction. There's more interaction, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, again, I guess that would, could be one upside of corporate America is that although you're in a cubicle, there's still lots of people there. There's like the office Safeway cake right. that everybody gets, whatever, sugar cake. But you don't really get the degree of touch that you need. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about the very uh, interesting way that this workshop, this space, this inspiration came about. So I have, I have a lovely friend who, um, is what they call a temple girl and she works at the temple of bliss and there are several temple of blisses all over and they offer a very specific and I think necessary service. Now, when I say exactly what it is, I know that it will garner a certain level of judgment, a certain level of perspective, feeling on it, um, and and it's it's exactly the reason that I want to create pure touch. So so she offers sensual massage um, for men and for women, and. If you want to know more exactly about that, about what that is exactly, then go ahead and Google the Temple of Bliss in LA, California. They also have one in New York, and um, I think there's other offshoots around America. So she was talking to me about her work, and that sometimes it gets tedious, arduous to to be in the space of um, really, I think giving energy to the body, just, you know, just like, Oh, someone coming in to sort of get their rocks off and leave. But then she shared that there's been clients that have been truly transformed in, in the work, in the, uh, awakening of their body, in the awarenesses that have come from being able to be in a space of loving touch. And loving is the key word here. Huh? Loving, light, it is. It's very loving. It's very light. Temple girls wear all white. Um, they're, the people who go are vetted before they go. It's it's not just mm. a place a light of, of lust and you know debauchery. There are plenty of places like that. Uh, around America, swingers, events, and so on and so forth. And obviously, we have a thing called the porn industry (laughs) that is on the dark side of this. So I mention it because contrast is a powerful teacher. You need to understand a little bit of the dark. And I know that when you're breaking up, Mm -hmm. um, or if you're in a marriage that's not satisfying or you might even be a love or sex addict that it's easy to just get a fix using the porn industry. Um, using the dark side of all this. Yeah. Using the, the, Mm -hmm. the dark side of it. And, and it does, and it does darkness feeds darkness and, and then it creates, and then eventually that level of darkness creates a void, a very real palpable loss of spirit, loss of connection, loss of soul void. And I see this and I feel it in my own body and I know it to be true that as we, as we start to sort of, it's almost like having a functional tumor. Mm. (laughs) It's like having, you know, you're like, it's benign. I know I have this giant 
mass in my gut, but it's fine. I can still digest food. I can still go on about my business of life. That one of their initial salves that we go for is romance. And I would say that ABC has nailed it with the bachelor and the bachelorette series because the images that come up are of being so desired, being the subject of desire, and then being in these like beautiful settings and having this beautiful food and these like all the senses are delighted and 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 you know lust is in there, but with some sort of rationale, and then just the vulnerability of like I don't want to be hurt, right? I don't want to be hurt, and romance is this great champion that says. You're never going to be hurt. I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to be the woman that you need. I'm going to be the man. I'm going to like lift you up. Love lift us up where we belong. <laughs> right? Where do you like all the all the all the poetry and songs and elation like we seek that out as a balm for the void, for the void that comes when we're like, wow. I really put my heart out there. I really invested my time in the pursuit of, it doesn't even mean the acquiring of, like I can say as a um, now single woman that you put, that dating's a job. and It's a piece of work. It's a piece of work. (laughs) And some people that you meet are just characters you're like wow i am on the third ring of dante's inferno right now and (laughs) i haven't even made it to a Mm. conversation yet you know like um and i'm aware that relationships are forming in all different ways over email over texting over um sometimes over dinner you meet and and it's a cordial conversation but you know within the first 50 seconds that you're like, okay, this is really going to probably be nothing. This is not going to really be something that I, where the story continues, the plot line continues. It was like, oh, that at least I got good coffee. (laughs) (laughs) And you happen to, stranger person, you happen to show up. Which, again, creates this like void, right? Creates like, oh, like I just... And it's spoken about, and we know the word, and I, I want to expound upon it further. Um, I want to speak about it from this realm, and then also from the other realm of connection, of being connected. In this realm, it literally does mean, when I'm speaking about connection, I'm speaking about touch. Someone hugging you, you being held, uh, cuddled with, kissed on the forehead, told you're beautiful, told I'm so proud of you. T- and just um, the love languages are alive and, and pumping and flourishing. And and of those, of course, there's words of affirmation. There's um, doing good deeds for somebody. There's buying gifts. There's um, touch. And then I always forget the fifth one. So I'll, add, I'll, I'll, I'll do the link <laughs> to the five love languages. Uh, Rebecca always does four. <laughs> four and the other one. Three are much easier to remember. I got it. Jeez. So from the other side, from the spiritual awareness, from the part of me that has my developed sixth sense, and people use this language all the time, is I want my soulmate. I want to find that deep, or if you if you really get a little bit cray cray about it, I want to find my twin flame. <laughs> And trust me, I've used all of these. So that's why I know them or soul match is even just somebody who's a good ideal partner, somebody that is complimentary to you. And, and it's really interesting because when people go through breakups, they often ascribe some sort of spiritual overture to what happened is, well, that was just a lesson it was just a karmic lesson. Don't like the word just. <laughs> so demeaning. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Didn't mean to interrupt you there, but just a lesson. It's just a lesson. Uh, 
and again, that's a reflection of a coping mechanism of minimizing and the pain. Yeah. Minimizing the pain or, uh, and again, coping, right. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a way of coping. And I, I don't say it with any negative connotation. It's necessary for survival. So the conversation with my friend who has offered, who is a temple girl, coupled with this beautiful, um, I would say, art installation piece done uh, by a, a man who is going around and he's taking strangers and he's pairing them together and he's like, P- please pose like a, you're a couple. And and then he has them step into that space, gives them some direction, takes the picture. Uh, some people you can just... the awkwardness is palpable in the picture and other people, there's a sweetness, a tenderness that comes through. And, um, and then you ask the people, well, how did you feel after that? And they're like, I feel like I genuinely care about this person now. Instant, instant to step into that space, that loving space. And then the third thing that I learned from you know, geeking out and watching The Bachelor was this pose called Yab Yum. Um, it's a yoga pose, where, and we're all familiar with it. I just wasn't familiar with the name, where you're sitting facing each other, and uh, one partner's legs are wrapped around the other, and the other's legs are wrapped around them, and you're very close, and your foreheads kind of touch, and uh, it's an intimate space. Your trunks aren't touching, really, and Certainly there's a distance between your genitalia. So you're not, you know, that's not like a penetrating sort of pose. Um, and you can do it with clothes on or off depending on the degree of intimacy. And the same thing happened, um, when the current, uh, bachelorette and her date joined together. That was the first time that was their very first date. And it was the first time and they were able to just drop into that space. And the connection was immediate, was immediate. There was like this deep breath and this attuning that happened, like an energetic sort of like trust, like a surrendering that started to happen. So um, I had all of these part and parcels in my awareness. And I had a really great day of uh, bliss. And then the day that followed, I was angry. I was, it was like a hang, it was like bliss needed a paycheck. It was like, you got to, you know, you got to feel this, but you got to pay in. And, and then the conversation I had with you, in fact, was like, I'm mad that I'm not giving my gift. Like, it's good to be blissed out. I feel excited that I'm blissed out. Yay for me. But this is not just a um, dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. Like, I, this is about the platform and the presence and um, the movement, the movement that is uh, this thing that it's Rebecca Freedom. Freedom is the mo- really, honestly, freedom is the movement f- for me. And it's what's coming through in such a powerful way. And, uh, all of this, um, I'm, I was looking on Facebook and just, you know, just angrily, irritatedly, just burning through time, just being like, I don't know what to do next. I'm just, I'm so frustrated. I don't know how to give blah, blah. blah. And then I came across this post that said, I just want my life to be made up of pancakes and good sex or <laughs> something <laughs> like that. And I was like, oh, that's it. I was like, oh my God, the sex and waffles to her. and and i just started having all these like graphic images and i mean graphic as in like graphic design (laughs) (laughs) images of like logos and things like that um take it where you want to those of you that are listening sex and waffles and then fortunately i have another really dear friend and i shared that with her and she's like um (laughs) i don't really no, I was like, what do you think of when I say that? She's like, uh, morning sex. That's, I was like, well, here's my idea. Here's the concept. And she's like, yeah, uh, no one's going to show up for sex and waffles. If that's the concept, she's like, people are going to think they're going to 
bone and then they're going to be fed waffles whipped cream uh <laughs> optional <laughs> so i was like yeah you're right it's really not gonna um go over like i want it to and then immediately i was like pure touch pure touch is what i'd like to call this because that's what it's going to be and i want to describe the set and setting and offer an invitation um, in addition to this. So I imagine the set being one of the many gorgeous yoga studios here in Encinitas, California, or uh, anywhere really across the country. There are just some phenomenal spaces that have been created. Um like truly that are filled with lotus flowers and Ganesha and flower of life. And you have teak floors or just, or just, you know, a space where you're like, this is not somewhere that people are exercising. This is somewhere where a spiritual practice called yoga is being exacted. This is a studio where holy ground, um, is being laid and and those those spiritual places are where I believe the uh, set will be, where it'll be really safe and inviting. Uh, it will delight the senses um, and, and have uh, that romantic sort of feel to it when you think of the colors of like Thailand and, and, uh, India and those bright pinks and gold, uh, silks and, and the fragrance and the fragrances and, and the water running. Yeah. Just, uh, and, and the, the adornment of, um, uh, carnation flowers that, you know, Hare Krishna's and, and the Baba's and the, um, Kriya bonds and the different, the Sikhs, all the different sort of, um, mindful, the Buddha, the mindfulness traditions and, and just having that set be where people who are single or who have not been in relationship for a long time can, step into and know that they're about to be really nourished in a place. You can't buy this in a store. You can't, um, get it online and you can't force it in relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you can walk around and I hear people being like, well, he's just not doing his work. Well, she's just not doing their work. You do. It doesn't, it, it excludes self-righteousness in, in that we're all in this together. We all have broken hearts. Um, and in that, uh, we, we are on their journey to, to oneness again. And, uh, we need each other to feel that, that spiritual, that connection, that agape love. So the, the set, the setting is of course the yoga studios and that's the invitation if you would like to participate if you would like to open your doors and provide to host um me and my partner uh would love to come facilitate pure touch and so the the set the energy of this is to access breath and a couple of the exercises are to sit back to back with a partner and to play with deciding who's going to hold their breath, who's not, and start to play with attunement and just um, tel- telepathy to kind of get that telepathic thing. I'll say that I did this with a group of people who were in rehab that had um, drug and alcohol rehab who had no reference for third eye awareness, um, no real spiritual practice, and the first time they were able to all attune to each other. Nice. Yeah. So it was really a sweet moment and it was an experiment on my part. And I was like, well, that's, that's very interesting. And it definitely uh, adjusted the harmonics of the room. You Mm -hmm. could feel, you could feel it. Also, um, 
just doing the simple practices of breathing into the chakras, the energy centers, giving some education around what those are besides the pretty color of the rainbow. Uh, I, I will, I'll just say right now, my understanding in so far is that in Western medicine, we have the endocrine system. So we have the thyroid, the thalamus, the, the different um, uh, lymphatic uh, systems, and actually the chakras correlate with our lymphatic and our uh, hormones too. So giving just some education around that very little, very minimal, this will be very interactive. It'll be a very interactive space. Um, also inviting people to, uh, to, to yab yum, to sit with their legs wrapped around each other. And if there's people that are really, um, maybe in trauma or they've had some space, of course, there'll be modifications for that of just feet touching, um, just a simple, um, uh, uh, gentle hand holding or whatever. Uh, of course, we'll open to bear hugs <laughs> at some point. Um, you know, and play with the different levels of touch, whether light touch or pressure. Um, I know there's uh, sort of along the lines of five rhythm dance. How there's different staccato movements or fluid movements or pounding movements or whatever. In the same way, there's different rhythm to touch. And so just really um, bringing awareness to that. And and then uh, closing the workshop with a little bit of process where um, people sit in triads and they can share their experience and actually um, touch verbally in that way. And then, of course, closing in uh, Savasana, just in your own quiet way in your own space. And I imagine this being, it depends on how full the workshop is really. Um, I, but I, I want to provide a sacred space where people can come and they can be nourished in this way. And it's not something to be ashamed of or, um, and in fact, it's something that will help, I think, attune to people to, to choose wisely in who they are hanging around and to have more of a sense of um, somebody who may be coming from like a violent space and you can just really see maybe they just are needing touch or whatever it is. And, and as always, because I'm an Aquarian, (laughs) I have, I have that, that, um, tsunami energy in me that wants to like make it just such a movement, just like such a, just a place where it's like, this is, this is, uh, this is starting so small as a seed here in Encinitas, California, but practitioners of course can come from it. Other, um, people that are, are facilitators, I imagine yoga teachers, counselors, whatever, being part of the, um, pure touch movement and it being something, uh, that, that is also a vehicle for breakup rehab as, as a real modality. Like it, it's sort of practicing the nourishing aspect of where you take breakup rehab and you do the 12 steps uh, by yourself, right? As if you were to read the AA big book and, and do the steps and have a sponsor, but you go to meetings, right? Well, um, pure touch will be literally that meet <laughs> the meeting, the meeting pure touch will be the meeting and um, there will also be like l- legitimate breakup rehab mm-hmm. groups where we're, we're going, we're using, we're doing the steps and that would be the more cerebral aspect and pure touch is more of the experiential sort of aspect. And I see this as a great way to get back on your feet. Oh my gosh. Like even yeah, because the, tu- the, uh, the touch has been missing. Yeah. Because people are bumbling around going to bars and just all that kind of stuff. And it's like break up rehab mm-hmm. and then pure touch. Break up rehab. Just, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. it all talks about being present, which what people need to do instead of hallucinate how they're going <laughs> to recover from whatever happened or, or what they think happened. Or to make romance a deity that you're... To make uh, what? Romance a deity mm. that you're like um, prostrating, bowing, please romance gods, please bring me the one, please bring me the thing that's going to like anesthetize this void and let it come. But 
it, it, I, again, I just, even talking about it, like I can feel like you you feel your nervous system drop, you know, you can feel like, oh, there could be truly a safe space for me to come. And, and um, honestly, yeah, I'm, what I'm feeling, and I think you know this about me is that what's most important is to, uh, fall in love or find that romance within yourself. Mm. It. It will certainly be a catalyst for that. And I, th- and of course, you know, whatever comes from it, if there's a, if there's a connection, if souls meet and they're like, oh, hi, I remember you. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you again, old friend. Or people start to wake up to themselves and they're like, oh, yeah, I am. I'm not just frigid. I'm not just angry. I'm not numb there's feeling inside of me i can i can i can give something so simple i can just place my warm hand or my clammy wet nervous hand on somebody's back right where their heart chakra would be between their or on somebody's sternum if they let me i can give a small smile i can give a tear i can actually show up and give such a gift but then have that reciprocity and that gift returned just as the, the, the energy of the infinity symbol of just yeah, you're drawing and giving, eight, yeah, giving and, which is and my receiving. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so this is pure, this again, this is, um, the Rebecca freedom mission of pure touch, uh, whether, Something to this degree already exists. I imagine it does. I imagine that, and I know that it does because I have friends in Boulder, Colorado, who um, have been cuddle partners, and they've invited people into. To, there's there's cuddle puddles. Damien is this guy uh, who does the who hosts them, and there's things like contact improv where you can dance and lean on somebody and and just drop your weight and just move to the music or a static dance where there's these different things. And, um, I certainly know that there's couples yoga, there's aerial yoga, there's, there's aspects of all of this. And, and I know that there might be something exactly to the T what I described. What I also know is I'm not facilitating it. (laughs) So, spirit moves through me in a very specific way and delivers uh, a very specific energy and creates a very specific container and and to see other people show up as cooperative components in that we're going to create something so beautiful and that will offer just a lightness to the community whatever the community and I want to say that I'm not talking to the yoga studios. They're just in the posh areas. I'm talking about even to the inner city schools that have a gymnasium. I will bring my tapestries. I will bring, I will bring my Nag Champa. I will, I I will, we can transform the space together um, and step into this new creation that's being birthed. That is the, uh, the next step in the lineage of the work I'm doing. So of course the first step is break up rehab, the, uh, the 12 new steps to start over stronger. The next step is pure touch. And of course, after that, I'm holding space for anybody who wants to be set free and you can work with me, Rebecca freedom. So if you're a yoga studio and you're interested in hosting or if you're an inner city school uh, or any other program that would be interested in, or if you're also a relationship specialist as well, and you have a community that you feel would benefit from Pure Touch, I invite you to connect with me at RebeccaFreedom.com, R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com. Send me an email and we'll schedule a time to put this event together. I also wanted to mention for those that want to become more familiar with breakup rehab, which is a core component of what Rebecca does, 
then go to alternativehealthtools.com. And it's episode 47, which is Breakup Rehab. And uh, you can find it there to find out more about that. So I love you all so much. Thank you for listening. Live your dreams and be well.